All right, so what's up everybody? Um, I just wanted to make this short little video here. Um, if you didn't grow up around classic beetles, um, like me, I was born in 92 uh, until owning and going out to test drive them to buy one. I never even sat in one. And um, you'd figure all this out if you bought one. And uh, you, know, you could always ask the people that are selling the vehicle, but I was trying to research and figure out what all the lights and the buttons meant. And the first couple that I went and looked at, um, everything was wore off. So uh, the shift pattern was wore off, which I already knew it was a, an H pattern, four speed. Um, but like the lights and the wipers, all that was wore off. So um, I just wanted to uh, put all this info in one place and maybe it'll be useful some, to somebody. Um, so nothing special here, but... Um, We'll start at the bottom and go up. This is a 1970 model. It might be a little different depending on what year model you're looking at. So radio, that's pretty self-explanatory on, off. Um, headlights are on the upper right here and uh, pull them out one click. You get the running lights, pull them out two and you get uh, everything full headlights and running lights. And wipers are here on the left. They're two speed. You turn it counterclockwise one click They'll come on low speed, two clicks, and you get full speed. Again, this is kind of the stuff you would figure out on your own. And I was able to Google and figure some of this out before going to look at a vehicle, but I couldn't really find all the info in one place. So if we come in here on the speedometer, so here you've got a light telling you you got indicator zone. It's hard to see with the glare on the glass through the camera. That one's a pretty obvious one. One that wasn't obvious to me was there's a light here and that little symbol above it has got a G with a circle around it. I thought that was the gas light the first time I went to look at one because it was on empty nearly and um, a reserve. It's got an R uh, right there and that's reserve and then empty is actually a line way back over here. Um, so anyway, because it was down into the R, and that G light was on, I thought that meant gas light. It actually means generator. If that light comes on while you're driving, uh, you want to immediately stop the car uh, because there's a possibility that the belt has broken. And if that is the case, uh, not only is your generator not spinning and you're not charging, but more importantly, your fan is no longer spinning and you're not properly cooling the engine. Once you verify that the belt hasn't broken, you're free to drive the car, but you're not charging the battery. Uh, it will run, but if you shut it off, you might not be able to crank it again. Uh, I do believe it'll run indefinitely on its own power. I'm not 100% on that. I'm more of a motorcycle guy, um, but I think it would continue to run. You've got an uh, oil pressure light over here on the right and then you've got a blue light that'll come on right there and tell you when you're left your high beam zone or that you're running high beams uh move down into the floorboard and you've got your emergency brake pretty obvious down here beside it though it's kind of hard to see you got the black knob on it that is to turn the heater on and off down is off and up is on and i don't know if they're all this way but mine will hold a position somewhere in the middle so you can kind of fine tune it the other one down here to the left controls where your heat is coming out at so uh down is coming out in the floor and if you kick it up um it comes out more up under the dash and i think that's meant to be like your your defroster um these two knobs that I didn't cover down here are for window vents. So you've got the louvered hood up here. And if you open these, then these vents on top of the dash will start kicking out air. So if it's uh, like a 70 degree day and you don't really want the windows down or need the windows down, uh, but you want a little bit of airflow, you can open those up and you'll get some air airflow coming up through those vents. And that is about it. Like I said, this video wasn't meant to be anything special or spectacular in any way. However, 
all that info I was able to gather online, but I was not able to gather it in one spot, uh, which was, I don't know, just not, not great. I thought surely I'd be able to find someone given like a cockpit layout. Here is the belt that I was talking about on the generator. It's the only belt you got. That generator's got a shaft running through it and drives the fan. So if that belt breaks, fan's no longer spinning, you're not properly cooling your engine. So yeah, I wanted to put that out there um, for some younger people uh, like me. Uh, most older people have at least rode in one of these. So they're probably aware on the rough layout of the dash and, and the driver's cockpit. However, I was not, and uh, when you're sitting in someone else's driveway trying to uh, test drive something and you don't know where anything is at and someone's staring over your shoulder, um, waiting on you to take off and stuff is kind of, uh, I, won't, I wouldn't call it really nerve-wracking, but, um, you know, you're just trying to get the layout of it and you do not know it. Um, so, yeah, if, uh, if you ever find yourself sitting in one of these, at least now you'll know where everything is and what everything does, at least for a 1970 model give or take a few years uh, all the changes to these were probably minimal changes each year so uh, as long as you're around 1970 it's probably a pretty similar layout